Thanks for staying with us. Now, President Muhammad Buhari on Monday said that a significant proportion of Nigeria's prosperity today is concentrated in the hands of few people. He said those few people are currently living primarily in four or five states of the, and the federal capital territory. The president said this at the ongoing session of the 25th Nigeria Economic Summit being held in Abuja. He said while only five states had most of the wealthy people, the remaining 31 states have about 150 million people waiting for better opportunities to thrive. Interesting stats. But what is the government doing about it? I still have with me Babashola Adigui, political analyst. Thank you very much for staying with us. It's a pleasure. To start this conversation, do you agree with the presidency's position that the wealth of this country is concentrated in five or six states of the Federation and the rest 150 million people are still trying their luck? Well, I believe the, the president has actually restated the obvious. We all know that the wealth of Nigeria is in hand of the few in this country. And on several occasions, the federal government has come out to say, to say that only 15% are actually paying taxes. Even Lagos State stated last week that only 700,000 Lagosians or residents in Lagos are actually paying taxes. So it means that there are some people who are getting this income and are not actually paying the government. Now, that's just, don't let me digress, that's just aside from on taxes. Yes, it's in the hand of the few, and they are in few states. I never thought of it until he made he that made. statement. Yeah. Again, I never thought of it. I know some of them, if I'm to start counting the state, I know Lagos, I know they've been protocol, they are in, uh, what's it called, Abuja, they are in Kano, and I'm sure some of them, are, some of them are in Ogun State. So we can't rule out some of them. So, the truth is, yes, you know, we know. The question is this, what have you been doing about this? Have you been able to look at the standard of the living of the people and see what you can do to get the wealth in the hands of the few and improve the standard? Yes, he, he, did, he did make um, comments to the fact that his government is doing much to um, improve, I mean, to improve on the level of unemployment and poverty in the country. But in your assessment of this administration's efforts so far, this is their second term, how would you say they have fared in addressing that issue? Um, for the economy, during the first term, um, things were tight. And it's not that it's getting better. And the truth is this, for any government, for, for any government to take, to improve in the economy, there are some things that government has to do in respect of the economy, improving on the economy. And one of those things is, number one, is to look at the taxes. Double taxation, multiple taxation, look at how you can reduce the taxes for the companies to employ more people and from there you reduce uh, uh, unemployment. Look at what you can do to encourage the, uh, the, 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 the youth in being independent. Some of them who have idea, how you can translate their, idea, translate their ideas into, uh, uh, what's it called? Innovation. You get it. Let's see what you can but do. But what do you say an increasing tax and VAT is, uh, is towards that end. Because well, that seemed to be something that people are talking about. Although the government has come up to say they're not introducing toll gates and all of that, because of course there's the ripple effect that would have on the economy. But now we know that VAT has increased, taxes are increasing. So, so. Is, he, is that for the good of Nigerians really? VAT. Well, has increased, but it's not going to be effective until next year, January 1, from January 1, according to them. That is if it is passed at the National Assembly. That's number one. Number two, for the increment in VAT, it definitely is going to have, it's going to have multiple effects on everything. Everybody will be claiming, ah, the government has increased VAT. Even the person that does not even understand VAT will tell you the government has increased VAT. 
And in other words, the increase in costs will set in. And we have to spend more. I understand what the government is trying to do. The government, what the government is trying to do is to generate more revenue. VAT is totally different from the other taxes. VAT is just on goods and services you are rendering or you are buying. That is what VAT is. But when we talk of the hotel taxes, for example, the personal income tax, for me, the government has not done anything about that. It's not increasing it for now. The company tax is still okay. The uh, petroleum profit tax is still intact. But the VAT, they look at it that people consume more than unemployment. Even the unemployed are hitting, the employed are hitting. So if we cannot increase on the taxes on their personal income tax and other companies, let us increase on what they are consuming. But the 2.5 added to it will have multiple effects. But the truth is, for me, it's good for the government to generate more revenue. Is there a better way? Um, you, you've uh, um, highlighted some of them, but is there a better approach that wouldn't include um, putting more stress on a ready strained populace finances? People are struggling to make ends meet. People who can barely, you know, eat three square meals a day. And then you increase, it seems everything is increasing. I and mean, isn't a better way the government could do this, as well as cushion the effect on the citizenry? There is a better way if the government is ready to do it. And what is the better way? If you are sure 15 percent are paying taxes, go after 35 percent. Regardless of the class or the status they belong, go after them, collect your money from them. They are owing you. That is what we call best of judgment in tax. All you just need to do is to assess a, a, an eligible uh, taxpayer who has failed to pay tax, then just get, give him any amount to pay. That is best of judgment because he has refused. But where the government is only concentrating on the few, they will continue to mount pressure on the people on the people. So the government should go after those who are not paying taxes. They know. They have the BVN. They know what comes into people's accounts. They know those that are, they don't know those that are actually paying. They can do it. But the laziness of our people will not make them do the right thing. Or well, they, who, should, who should be at the forefront to, uh, let me use the local language now, ginger these people to get up and actually do the job that they're being paid to do to ensure that those that need to pay their taxes do so? They, they all know what to do. They all know what to do, but they are not ready to step on those. Let me tell you, they know that for them to get more taxes, they will have to pay more. And the government is looking at it from this angle. I'm not, are we ready to pay more for something we are not sure of? But when it comes to taxes and you have your facts, you get more. If you are campaigned 30,000 to recover 100,000, spend it. They know what to do. So for those to ginger them is for the, the media. We continue to talk on the media, on here, go to the, 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 what's it called, the newspaper, continue to let them see what suggestion on what they can do. But the truth is, the people who are not paying taxes, let me tell you, the, the rich or the wealthy are the ones that are not actually paying taxes. Those, the so-called people with our wealth are those that are not paying taxes. Number one, have we ever traced the sources of their wealth? Has government done anything about that? Number two, have you ever checked if they are actually paying taxes or they are just collecting the money and putting it, spending it without because the truth is, if you have the wealth of Nigeria in your hands, you, you, don't let me use the word thief. Eh? If you are an accused, eh? you have the wealth of Nigeria in your hands. For me, <laughs> you can't pay tax because you're already still. It's just like you are giving out and you are collecting it back in another form. So the revenue, the FIRS should wake up. Wake up. Do the right thing. I'm very sure one of the reasons why the FRS will be finding it difficult is because, number one, maybe they, is, they are not being able to generate uh, enough funds or they don't have budget 
to support their ag agreement in court. Or sometimes uh, the class of the people that should be approached. The FIRS was appointed by someone. Some of the people working with him were also appointed by someone. So they know that these people are not paying taxes and going after them will cost them their job. You got, so the best thing for them they, to do is for them to continue to yeah, consult well, from, from what you're saying, it's almost like we're at a stalemate. Like if, if you know, the, the person that has the money to pay for taxes is not paying, how then can we ever imagine balancing or bridging that gap between the rich and the poor? <laughs> well, like I always say something, we need someone who is ready to step on toes. We need someone who is ready to step on toes, not the one that we bring this one, that we pamper this, and they use the other left hand to jail another person. We need someone who understand what equality and equity, what the two of them actually mean. You get me? We need someone who is feeling what the people are feeling. We need someone who have the understanding that truly we need to get to the root of the sources of income of these people that are so-called with just the magic civil servant collecting about uh, maybe they are is a director in the office and have about 30 50, 50 000 collecting every month or 400 000 every month and house estates houses estates everywhere you need to check a person in the government who has ruled for four years and automatically turn out, turns out to become a billionaire overnight you need to check what were the legal source of income within that four years. You need to check. But where we fail to address the truth, we are just sleeping. <laughs> All right. Let, let, let's, let's, before we wrap things up, let's look at, go back to that uh, presentation by the president. Uh, he used the occasion to, let me see now, affirm that in addressing, I'm going to take a bit of um, a quote from what he said. So, he said, in addressing population growth, security and corruption matters in developing economies, policies and programs must focus on, must focus on promoting inclusivity and collective prosperity. In a sum, do you agree? And is he doing what he is saying? Well, I agree. Is if he's he... doing it, it's a different thing. Because I only know what they say. Whether they are doing it is what I cannot say 100%. Yes, we need to do all those things. But one thing I've known about Nigerians is we have best ideas. Implementation we, is always a challenge. Implementation is always a problem. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on this program. Thank you very much for being here again. We'll go on a short break now, and uh, when we come back from uh, looking at our PLOS uh, politics package, I will give my take. Stay with us. The national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Soshomele, has dismissed the allegation by the opposition People's Democratic Party, saying it is appointing justices into the Supreme Court to influence the outcome of the ongoing presidential election petitions tribunal. The chairman spoke to newsmen in Abuja, saying the claims are false and an attempt at blackmailing the Supreme Court and judiciary into acting out of fear. It is not true that APC people are already pretty posters one way or the other for presidential election come 2023. Only those play God can do that. Number two, it is not true that judges of the Supreme Court have been appointed just because um, uh, there is an election petition that is going to be had by a panel of judges of the Supreme Court. Those are clearly the prerogative of the judiciary, and APC does not interfere. I want to warn PDP also to stop blackmailing the, the Supreme Court or blackmailing the judiciary with uh, a view to getting them to act out of fear. All of us who are lovers of, of democracy must recognize that there is limit to what we are expected to do as responsible political parties. We must not drag the judiciary into the murky waters of politics. What pays PDP is that since 1999, all judicial appointments have been made by PDP. 
Nobody in the opposition has raised any issue. Nobody in opposition has ever raised issue on how tribunal members are appointed by the presiding officers either of the Court of Appeal or of the Supreme Court. So, but I realized at the beginning that we shouldn't even bother ourselves to respond to some of this clear mischief. But I realized that sometimes when the recycle lie over and over and over, in some quarters, people begin to talk about it. So let me make it emphatically clear. We do not, as a matter of tradition, APC is not known to resort to inflation paneling or Inflating the judiciary in order to seek any favor. We rely on the merit of our case. And for those PDP who insist that as if we, the judiciary has favored APC, all the petition delivered so far, particularly those ones in the South South, even clear cases where we believe we won, the judiciary resolved them in favor of those PDP governors in those states we are clearly the carry that was not used in most cases. My thought tonight is simple. Government has no moral right to claim the defeat of Boko Haram as long as those the group hold in captivity are not released, and this includes the 112 Chibok school girls. It's been five and a half long years of unimaginable terror and anguish for these unnamed, unarmed children, rather, who may have lost their innocence to the experience of captivity. Let's not forget the one being persecuted for her fate, Leah Sharibu. So it's rather sad for me that our leaders are more interested in their reputation and bickering in the media. We must call them out for such behavior, such blatant lack of focus on the real issues and remind them of the long-suffering parents who hold on to hope still that their girls will return home. Please, Mr. President, bring back our girls now. And that's where we draw the curtain tonight. Join us again at 7 p.m. for more engaging conversation. And do remember to share your thoughts with us on all our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching and be well.